Hi, welcome back to Guns.com. Chris Eager Tim, coming to you from the Guns.com warehouse. We've got more than 6,000 guns of all shapes, sizes, and sorts looking for a good home, and that's kind of where you come in. Now, let's play a little bit of uh, Name That Frame here with all these Smith & Wesson revolvers. Uh, Start about the uh, early 20th century, you start to see the original guns, the, the side ejectors that Smith & Wesson became famous for. Five, six, seven, eight, nine shot revolvers, what have you. Breaking them off into frames, you had small frame guns, like your I and J series. You had medium frame guns, like your K to L series. Then you started to have more large frame guns, like your, your N's and X's. <clears throat> now, what does that all mean? We're just going to go through it real quick. There's more than 200 variations of all the different Smith & Wesson models out there. Uh, going from your, your smallest 22 rimfires all the way up to 500 Magnum. So that's, that's a big stretch. They, they came in uh, anything from 1 and, and 7 8 inch barrels to uh, barrels that were significantly longer, you know, <clears throat> and different finishes, everything from stainless and your standard blue to uh, nickels and two-tones, all sorts of stuff out there. And a lot of it really spans the generations and really spans uh, the development of caliber history. So there's a lot going on. So I'm just going to run through it real fast. <clears throat> kind of starting with your smallest frame revolvers that Smith & Wesson had. These went back to the uh, uh, 1930s and 40s. These were your I-frames. And these things are, are almost, they almost feel like toy guns. They're so small in the hand. Uh, Smith & Wesson ditched these, which were, uh, you see a lot of 32s and 38 Smith & Wessons, 32 uh, long and all that. Uh, these were five and six shot revolvers, very small, very compact. This grew into what was, became the Chief Specials and the J-Frame Snubbies. These revolvers are almost exclusively uh, two inch barrels or smaller. You're looking at five shot cylinders. Most of them are 38s, even though there are a few 357s. Since they're designed as carry guns, they typically have abbreviated sights that are fixed, even though there are a few models out there with adjustable rear sights. Now, in the J frames, they come in a few different sub variants. Uh, like, for instance, your classic Chief Special series have a hammer right here that you can cock. It's double action, single action with a hammer. This is a Centennial. It still has a hammer, but it's completely covered. You don't see it, you can't feel it. It's basically snag free. So when you say a Centennial, it's still a J frame, but it just doesn't have that hammer to catch on stuff coming out. You see these used a lot as uh, backup guns, deep concealment guns. This is good for an ankle holster or something like that. Kind of splitting the difference between your chief specials that have an exposed hammer and your centennials that don't are your bodyguard models. Still in the J frames, these have a shrouded hammer. The hammer is still there. You can still cock it. So you've got the hammer knurl inside the frame. So it's double action, single action, whereas your centennial is just double action only. As you can still cock this hammer even though it's almost completely shrouded. The only thing that's exposed is that hammer spur. These were classics. That's a nickel finished gun. That's a really neat little gun there. <coughs> Moving up in size from your J frames, which are small frame guns, you have your K frames, which is a medium frame. These are almost always six shots, almost always 38s. Moving into a few 357s, this is your classic Smith & Wesson Model 10. Uh, it started off as the first Smith & Wesson military and police due to all the issues uh, with uh, military and law enforcement contracts. This was your classic K-frame Smith, typically seen in a 4-inch barrel, even though they do have 3s, they do have 2s, sometimes you see these in 6s. They went a little larger over time. For instance, they grew into this 357. This is a Model 19. They referred to this as the Combat Magnum. Six shot, 357. 
it's beefier, it's got more meat to it, but it's still a K-frame, it's still a medium frame revolver. A lot of the guts, the frame size, still the same stuff. The same cylinder pattern. In that, they also had target model K-frames. Your target masterpieces and whatnot, extremely long barrels. These guns are absolute tack drivers when it comes to punching holes in paper. <clears throat> Growing larger from your medium frame revolvers, your K-frames that were 38s and 357s, you had your L, your L frames. Now your L's are what they refer to as a medium large. It's kind of in between your medium frame and your larger frame revolvers. These are typically always 357, six shots, even though today like for instance on this 686 this is a plus series gun in other words it's got seven shots in the cylinder rather than your traditional six Smith started doing that a few years ago and a lot of the end frame revolvers that are out there I'm sorry the L frame revolvers this is an L frame revolver that are still out there today are the plus series guns that are seven shots now super size and stuff you had your end frames. This is a model 610, 10 millimeter. Uses full moon clips because that's a rimless cartridge. Sits down inside, pop it back out. The whole clip. Uh, this will shoot 10 millimeter or 40 Smith and Wesson since it's the same cartridge size. Jerry Mikulek was renowned for using this model in a lot of his uh, Speed Series records. Now, inside the N-Series guns, they originally had started off as the S-Series and matured over time through the, the 50s and 60s and 70s. This is where you really saw Smith pushing past your 357s and 38s. You had your early registered Magnums, your 41 Magnums, your 44 Magnums. These guns really kind of set the pace in your, uh, what people refer to as a large bore service revolver. It's, it's a large frame. It's basically just a supersized version that you saw in like the medium to medium large frames with your K's and your L's. Just everything maximized to use those heavier Magnum cartridges, your 41's, your 44's, things of that nature. This is a beautiful early uh, end prefix gun made in the 70's. It's a three, uh, I'm sorry, a 44 Magnum, 4 inch packs a wallop. Then, topping out the family, in 2006, Smith & Wesson came out with what they refer to as their X-Frame Revolvers, which this is a 500 Magnum. This was the first X-Frame Revolver. It's a very large piece, as you can see. It's, it's just a behemoth. Like everything with it, it's like you took some of these medium to large frame revolvers and just really grew it overnight. With a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, you're talking about a serious cartridge right there. That is definitely a beast. The only other X-Frame revolver is Smith & Wesson's 460, which is in 460 Magnum. There's one more uh, frame out there, the Z or Z frame. It's uh, basically their version of the Taurus Judge series. It's a uh, 410 uh, 45 Long Colt. That's a, a little bit of crash course on uh, the various frame sizes with Smith & Wesson. Now to, to get any quality Smith & Wesson revolver, head on over to guns.com where we've got uh, an article that goes into a lot more detail than what we covered here. Uh, and We've also got a, as you can see, giant selection of these guns in stock all the time.